Good afternoon, everyone. And um, firstly, I'll just thank you for joining this webinar uh, of some park uh, where we are going to discuss about uh, the COVID situation that we are in and how uh, you know businesses are coping with it and how we can grow. Um, I'm extremely pleased to have with us uh, Bhageshri Navare. Uh, to give a background, Bhageshri Navare is uh, is a very very experienced marketing professional. Currently working as the associate director and category head in PepsiCo. Uh, she's taken care of uh, Kurkure and Cheetos, uh, very well known and uh, I think brands which. Uh, all of us are very well familiar with uh, Pagishri, if I'm not wrong. There's there's more than 16 years of experience with you um, in in Pepsi itself. Uh, she's she's worked across geographies, um, you know, and and within uh, Pepsi as well in multiple brands. Uh, and you know, as as an individual, um, you know, I'm very happy. Uh, she hails from Mumbai. And and so am I. Not that you know there's any issue there, but yes. So uh, so good to have uh, you uh, here on with us, uh, Bhageshri, and uh, welcome uh, to this uh, edition of Sampark. Thanks a lot, Vinny. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, yeah so thanks. So uh, Bhageshri, the way we'll go about this is that I have few questions, uh, you know, in mind and. Uh, maybe uh, you know around the situation where it is today, and maybe you know we would like to hear from you your views on it. But uh, so to start with, and you know we are today in a situation where um, you know over the last three months or longer actually, the country has been seeing a lot of changes in in government business decisions and government decisions and business decisions and. There are times when uh, there is a lot of uncertainty around um, the the situation today. So, uh, as per you, and you know the way from where you look at things, how do you see the situation? And uh, you know, how do you think this has changed consumer behavior? How do you think this has impacted business? We would like to just have your views on this. So definitely, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed life uh, as anybody among us has ever seen. And uh, perhaps for our lifetime, the biggest change we see. Uh, because in nobody's have we seen such a big effect that has actually impacted the whole world uh, at one go. So necessarily, uh, not only have our, uh, you know, basic behaviors changed, but our needs, our uh, basic human needs have also been uh, and I'd like to base the needs or human behavior uh, based into two or three buckets uh, and not is exclusionary but uh, you know the thing that has happened is uh, around the sick control uh, in our lives and uh, so, to call the first needs, uh, you know, that's got impacted is health. Uh, we are moving from, you know, uh, I can live my life uh, and, uh, you know, get anything I want in life kind of a feeling to a prevention and a coping mindset. Uh, and that on the health front is going to make us look at a really different, uh, uh, you know, impact on the industry. So, while the health industry has been growing, but health and wellness will be the biggest industry that will see, uh, you know, a lift from here. And this will have different impact, uh, you know, for the affluent class of people where whose incomes haven't got impacted that much. We're going to see, uh, you know, them having changes in their lifestyle, like including workouts or yoga or organic food or diets and stuff like that. So I'm saying that, uh, you know, uh, the health, the health, uh, health and wellness industry, we're going to see a huge upswing. We're going to see that, uh, uh, you know, there'll be colors on this between the affluent class and the middle class, while the affluent class will look at upgrading their lifestyle to healthier lifestyles, but the middle class will be looking at, you know, 
this vitamin supplements first aids uh getting uh you know our regular health checkups going and stuff like that so uh that's going to see a big upswing uh, i see the insurance sector actually have a big uh, a big leg up as well uh then children's food uh, utility things like that are going to see a big lift essentials for daily life household care products fresh food staples will continue to grow and these will become more important to us so that far as health goes the uh, a big human change is going to happen on lifestyle Uh, we're all going to move to a risk mitigation mindset, as I see it. So we're already seeing out out of home entertainment. You know, businesses such as these sectors, such as these, come down on uh, their impact on the economy. But compensatory lifestyles uh, will definitely take a you know take um, a leg up. And in that, I mean, in home entertainment uh, is going to go up. Uh, you know, uh, people are going to make happen education at home. so a lot of uh, education sector uh, uh, you know is going to come up also uh, we're seeing uh, a, i think a, a few uh, you know few people have already started on school wala started something making big monies on it uh, so be going up um, you know why the economically what's going to happen is why the middle class will be being the present saving and doubling uh, savings the affluent class is going to look at investing in a way that risks them so uh, if the markets are not doing well you know let me invest in gold so the gold investments are kind of going to go up uh, so a lot of unprecedented changes on health on lifestyle is going to happen but a few sectors that i see will kind of continue to be will be packaged food uh, bridges uh, that kind of thing uh, you know food deliveries will continue to be uh, uh, you know doing well uh, Uh, you know indulgence like uh, alcohol cigarettes etc will continue to do well but essentially we are going to health lifestyle and economic status change uh, on businesses as we know them hey thanks and i think very very well um, covered and i i i can only agree to what you said around you know the health and wellness piece about the need for security i think very very well covered um see uh, you know so now obviously looking at uh, you know since most of the viewers on this uh, webinar are actually merchants and uh, you know jinke khud ki dukane hain jinke khud ke businesses hain right so uh, unke liye for these merchants um what is your view on what kind of innovations they should do i mean kis tarike ki innovation unko karni chahiye apne business mein um, kya unko digitization seekhna chahiye should they focus on digitization right uh, what's your view on on that and uh, clearly i you know uh, when it come to larger uh, organizations uh, you know unke paas marketing budgets bhi hote hain unke paas log bhi hote hain unke paas khud ki technology teams bhi hoti hain uh, ye karne ke liye but how does a a merchant uh, who is let's say categorized as a medium sized merchant or a jo hum sme kehte hain business category mein mm-hmm. how do they innovate in these times uh, this is a very uh, very interesting question it is uh, it is definitely going to impact uh, the smes in a big way i think uh, most of the smes would have already started feeling the impact of that uh and uh you know i think the writing is a little on the wall there uh we need to see whether trend going uh and we need to be able to see uh how we can participate in that trend uh and so let me uh, you know just give you a stati- few statistics that we are seeing uh from the business that i am coming from uh because of covid shopping behavior has changed drastically right uh and due to the need for safety and convenience we are seeing people move to online in a big way so uh, right now in india the penetration of uh, online shopping is about if you compare it to china china is at 26 uh, the us is at 16% but what we are seeing is the projection for us also some 100 million people 110 million people Uh, are sort of uh, you know uh, online uh, uh, e-commerce users, but 
over the next six seven years we are going to go to our 300 to 350 million users can you imagine that uh, you know this means like drastic they're going to have a cagr of you know over 30 35 percent which is like the fastest in any industry so this will necessitate all of us whether we are you know medium size or small uh, to participate in that space uh, my task as an SME, I will need to drive penetration and I will need to take share from the sector that is the online things. And, mm. uh, you know, actually, I want to say that it's, uh, it's a and uh, ecom, I would like to propose, uh, we, we need to look at it from how we can develop an ecom model for ourselves. We may be uh, a brick and mortar store today. But uh, what stops us from becoming a part of this online, uh, you know, bandwagon? And I think uh, it would be just life easier for us. So, mm -hmm. you know, let me let me just elaborate what I mean. I'd say at a very found at a step one level, I would suggest that uh, you, all of us, all the SMEs, can have step up their base to be online by just opening site. Uh, which is, uh, you know, or actually ourselves with an aggregator, uh, whether it's uh, Swiggy or uh, I think some some of us would have, uh, some of the SMEs would have done that already. But and opening a website is actually, you know, the easiest thing. It's like it was as easy, uh, you know, for um, me and my sister's business to open a website, uh, you know, as it was to, us to come on to this link here. Uh, you can go to Shopify.com. You know, there are a host of other pl other places you can go to. And it's like you got uh, in 25,000 under 1 lakh rupees, you can get a full website going in no time. I mean, within three days, you can have a full website. I can have my menu there. Uh, that, that's, that means I'm open 24-7. That means even if I'm sleeping in the night, I'm under, uh, you know, from the one kilometer radius uh, customers which uh, know me. And I'm getting an order anytime. So, uh, you know, that would be like the easiest thing to do. And I'm assuming all of the merchants here would be, uh, you know, already on uh, using uh, systems such as the ones you have on Fine Labs. But if you can get your payment system integrated uh, with the current delivery system or link based system, uh, where the site can generate uh, a link, then you are actually able to write, uh, you know, the payments back end also very, very uh, seamlessly. Uh, and that's going to be really fast uh, and let me tell you domain and registration for a website takes really little time so it's much easier than we think uh, and uh, you know yeah with that one click we are online ourselves so that i would say should be the foundational thing uh, that anyone in the sme need, should do get online the second i would say is in a period of time and it uh, doesn't need to be too far from now but i look at an like an, an enhanced step in that direction where i would do uh, you know open myself up on facebook on insta on uh, you know a, a, anywhere where i'm seeing uh, consumers today so there is the generation the gen z and then there is the millennials and uh, all of them are looking to shop online insta and facebook so if i'm even if i am say uh, you know some rad and I'm, uh, you know, I just open up my Insta account, a picture of what the consumer knows today as my store, and keep putting every week uh, what we are sharing, uh, what my offers are, uh, what are the new things that we are now doing. It just builds salience, uh, you know, driving awareness and salience is the first step. And then you can drive engagement by getting, you know, a shop now link there, people can order. You can have a payment integrated into that. It's as easy as we made a Facebook page. How, so, how, you know, how long? I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting your flow, but how long do you think um, a business person um, should wait to see results coming in? You know, at times uh, when you invest into something, there is a little bit of uh, impatience, right? That, oh, rupees the website mm -hmm. right? How soon or how, how long do you think uh, one should wait to really uh, make sure that yes, they have taken the right step? You know, uh, 
the weight will be commensurate to the effort we put in to build our immediate catchment area. So, for example, if I'm like I was saying, I'm some grand enterprises, or I'm uh, you know any, I have mm-hmm. uh, say about three hundred customers come to. Uh, if I'm able to, you know, I will. But if I'm able to do a push message to them, either on phone numbers or on the WhatsApp, to say I'm on this website, this is my link, come to my website, and I'm going to do a home delivery for you. If you are able to get, you know, X percentage of that 300 in your first week, then you are into business right away. Uh, it's about how, you know, if you are reaching out to them and. you know letting them know uh, on a week on week basis that you are on this website or you are on facebook or you are on insta uh, it will be as fast as within a month we realize returns uh, and also you know uh, mm-hmm. let me say i think it doesn't matter but imagery matters a lot i come from a category where we are constantly monitoring huge trends whether on our beverages side of the portfolio or on our food side of the portfolio and imagery and aspiration to consumers is so important uh it really makes everything worth paying more for so uh just you know we we don't have to think we are a small enterprise and uh you know you know only the biggies or the fancy places going online any one of us can really start it uh, uh, and let me tell you i've done that personally in my life as well uh, so it can be as i want to and go out there and just say it to everybody in my system whether it's my consumers customers uh you know get to media and i think the third would be like you know develop mastery on it what i would do is in a year or so i build a portfolio which is only for online so uh, which i'm going to service online and i would start with last mile deliveries to make those deliveries kind of happen so those would be exotic things you know these could be uh you know that i'm importing or it could be it or it could be uh any item it could be even electronics but uh, you know get online with the portfolio and then you're up there uh, you know with people so but is i don't see an alternative uh, versus going into uh, the online space hey thanks very insightful and uh, you know in in one of the points you mentioned that uh, you know you want to link to payments and i think that kind of then completes the entire uh, cycle right i mean you place the order you end up receive the order even if it is midnight right as you said uh, the shop is open 24/7 then and you receive orders so uh, and you did mention about linking to payments now see we are a fintech and obviously very close to the payments uh, world and we we view payments first and then business whereas you know that's others view it slightly differently but what are what as per you are some of the recent payment trends uh, that you have observed and uh, you know as per you which are the ones that are here to stay beneath uh, on payment trends i think very thoroughly offline <laughs> Uh, you know, cash is going to be risky because it's not contactless that's, at that's, all. That's, so, that's good to hear for us. Not yes, a, <laughs> since demonetization uh, kind of happened, that good news is coming in the fintech way to you. Uh, no, so I think that's going to actually um, apply. Uh, cash uh, will be risky or. and then uh, we're going to see transaction based services uh, you know go up so wallets upi qr uh, and link based all of that i see like really go up but you know the underlying underlying trend of this is the consumer mindset of i want to simplify my life uh, and with covid that trend is axis so the key insight that we need to read under this is that the consumer wants to simplify his life uh so <clears throat> which means my rent is also auto uh it, you know it's on auto pay uh, whether it's my electricity bill any of these so the idea is that how can i simplify my life and what can enable me to do that so all of these will do that look at look at wallets um, uh, i think we have 330 million already uh, you know e wallets uh, in the country so that really tells us that uh, deep down pop straight uh, to one lakh population towns we are going to see this big trend happen uh, and i was just seeing 
even the BCT was quoting that there's a twenty percent increase in people using net banking and wallets and fresh food and personal care items. So definitely, uh, you know, the trend is moving to making it contactless. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, good news. Thank you. And I'm really happy that people in the in the FMCG world also think uh, the same way. O- only you know endorses the view that we have. Uh, see with the current situation and and maybe going back to our earlier discussion of covid and you know the current pandemic uh, but you know more and more businesses are looking at ways to woo back customers uh, you know as you rightly said you made some point around you know the middle class will survive the affluent class will spend uh, and they will maybe invest but uh, largely you know uh, you know for a business person uh, how do they woo back the customer or how do they simplify some aspects of their business or operations so that they can focus on maybe getting the customer back um you know um so would you like to have some recommendations here for uh, our our viewers and listeners yeah i can understand that it's a little uh, tricky and quite uh, um, i you know it's going to be quite uh, an important task to woo back our customers and there are no easy answers overall but the one thing that we for sure know is uh, we are going to see lesser walk-ins in our in, in stores uh, and the consumer is going to look at using his thumbs on his phone uh, more than you know uh, walking uh, that uh, 100 meters to go to the store so uh, we had to with our consumers virtually uh, all uh, all as uh, and even actually uh, bigger organized trade stores are going to have to do that so while the organized trade stores uh, already kind of getting online for example i have a spencer uh, you know i have a spencer number uh, with which i chat on whatsapp and i place my orders mm-hmm. and they just deliver it Uh, and that's quite easy. And from what I understand, it's it doesn't uh, you know it's not a big investment. Uh, so you know, the bigger stores are going to start direct home deliveries. But as I was mentioning earlier, even even the uh, you know what we call the SM, the smaller stores uh, would need to engage virtually consumers much more. So uh, you know connect. WhatsApp, home deliveries, uh, getting them to know your menu, etc. I think these are hygiene things. I would imagine a lot of them would be doing that already. But uh, to, to really keep the consumer in the fold versus him going out, at least in the short term, say uh, you know, these need to evaluate a bit of a what we call a loss leader strategy. just to say that uh, you know i'm making a loss i will keep the customer in my fold uh, and therefore keep staying keep being a lead even if i make a loss so that's not to say that we make a loss on everything we're selling but on whatever is that essential that the customer was coming to us for so you know a simple example would be bread which i have to buy so i i would like to keep going to that store So, so as for that store to stop me from going to uh, an organized trade place, uh, if I'm able to get a certain discount on that bread, which I find is better for me, uh, uh, you know, on a weekly basis versus going to the organized trade online store, then I would, you know, want to go close. I would want to go to the uh, store which is in the 200, 300 uh, meter radius to me. uh and then because i'm placing an order here on my daily essential of bread i would place orders uh, on others too so it's not ideal in the long run that in times like these to keep catchment with us i think a loss leader strategy would still be something that i would look at i would recommend okay that's uh, interesting uh just uh, uh, you know just an input to our viewers uh, you know if you have any queries you can start putting them in the chat box uh, that you see on the screen uh, i already have a few coming in but you know if there are more uh, please share um you know uh yeah so uh, sabagishi so one yeah so sabagishi so sorry i i have i have one question for you and you know 
uh, and this is you you mentioned about loss leader you mentioned about investing in technology you know uh, you know, at the at the start of this century we we started hearing things like and you know somewhere around let's say 2011 12 primarily uh the 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 word that started coming out that data is the new oil right so maybe something that was uh, oil the way we saw it over the last two centuries but now clearly we're saying that maybe data is the new oil how important do you think is um, you know the data insights or are are important for to get an understanding of the consumer behavior and as a result get more business um while i know you know organizations of your scale do invest a lot uh, in in data analytics but think of it from a perspective of a business person how do you think that you know they can usually look at data or what are the important data insights uh, to get an understanding of consumer behavior yeah so um we need to that i'd say the first thing we need to look at is uh, data is the uh you know just data uh and we see so much uh, happening but that doesn't help if we don't uh an insight on you know understanding the consumer behavior overall and i'd say uh, you know the one good thing that happens with smes is that they know their customers close uh, closer than anybody else uh, you know uh, uh, an organized trade chain uh, uh, might is as closely uh, as a smaller enterprise would uh, and if we are able to generate if if we know our customers then we what the insight on the human behavior is uh, so data in that case can be actually an added advantage uh, what we do know right now mm-hmm. is uh, that uh, for example in gk2 uh, i always from uh, you know gk2 uh, uh, n block i get order of say about 1000 uh, rupees per week for sure from this uh, place so how can i make uh, you know a plan i'm just thinking if i am a you know an enterprise merchant how can i make a plan uh, which really uh, you know takes that down, uh, data that i know uh, for them and then project to them the next months to say pichle mahine aapne ye kharida you know by your pattern for the last 2 3 months i would recommend the order hona chahiye if we are able to do that then you know you are providing to the uh, customer an opportunity uh, that helps him ease his life or simplify his life uh, and towards that data will be important for you uh, so if you are able to get that to you uh, for that data usable for you to project something for the customer that he doesn't know that will be good in fact i i'm seeing that a few companies are doing such pilots where they are reaching out to their customers through either whatsapp or naturalized language uh, you know calling uh, where actually like a, <laughs> maybe this will happen in the next uh, few years maybe it will happen in four years but uh, you know we have people calling us from stores uh, uh, who will say hello i am miss uh, uh, you know so and so uh uh i'd like to serve you uh, this month last month to this would you like to take uh, you know do you want to change your order so so so, so it's like siri and, and alexa calling you for orders huh? in a way but even while that happens i think uh, if we know our consumers uh, even if it's in a small fold we can tell them aapne pichle mahine ye liya can we serve you this so that would be a delight agar mujhe koi call kare to acha lagega mujhe yeah okay um so good i think very nice and i think what you just made me visualize is something really nice when you said that you know maybe there is a chatbot who's taking orders or there's someone virtually taking orders for you right and maybe this is the next level of ai that uh, we can think of yeah 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 great so uh, i have a, i have a question coming in from our uh, viewers and uh, this is more on consumption patterns so uh, 
see, uh, you know, I'm sure as an organization, you would be viewing consumption pattern pre-COVID and now. And how do you see the change in consumption pattern? For example, is there a change in the preference for a particular pack size or uh, in any other way? Do you see preferences changing? Uh, no, this is one of the other questions that comes. So what's your view on that? I think, uh, see, on consumption pattern, definitely a change. Uh, again, because this is this of the many Indias that we live in, uh, you know, from the FMCG industry, which we are looking at closely, uh, because we're in the food and beverage, uh, we are seeing two kinds of trends. There is the metros and the urban uh, sort of towns, and then there is the lack in the rural uh, town classes. Mm-hmm. In the rural town classes, we are definitely seeing a rise on the smaller SKUs or the uh, smaller price points. Uh, and why is that? Mm-hmm. One is a lot of our working class migrated there. Uh, the other is uh, recent uh, monsoon. Uh, so we are going to see, uh, you know, that also uh, help. The third is COVID hasn't impacted the rural as much as it has the urban setup. So. In those segments, we are definitely going to see uh, going to surge up back, and therefore the smaller pack sizes we will see go up. We're already seeing that in our businesses. And the metros and the urbans, what's happening is they are making lesser visits to the stores, but their uh, frequency uh, is going down, but their purchase consumption per visit is going up. So they are looking to hold. They are looking to buy the packs. They are looking to see discount mm-hmm. offers. That you know, help them do larger consumptions. So, mm-hmm. in the metros, we're going to see larger bags, uh, you know, moving to the larger pack size consumption. The rurals will, will more like grow a smaller one. Is at least the trends we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, I think, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, so another one which has come up is, uh, what is as PepsiCo? And you know, I, I can uh, maybe put a disclaimer here that you may share what is uh, something that can be publicly shared. But as PepsiCo, what are you doing to get more consumers uh, uh, for your own uh, retailers and distributors? Uh, so because at the end, uh, you, you're the you're the product, or let me put it very crudely, you're more like the product manufacturer, right? And but the retailer is where your end consumer is coming. So, uh, what is PepsiCo doing during these times? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, we, we, in our beverages business, we lost a lot of business because the summers where uh, COVID has hit us. So, uh, we're going to do a whole lot in yeah. the balance. And, uh, yeah. you know, as I was saying, with consumer behavior and the need to save, uh, value is going to get redefined in a big way. So, uh, okay. what we were seeing is value as, uh, uh, you know, good offers. On that, uh, you know, the value be, it, it be guaranteed, it be, uh, you know, it, it mm-hmm. there. So, uh, it, we are definitely across the portfolio going to be rolling, uh, you know, value first to our consumers in balance of year. Uh, and by that, I mean something that's going to be relevant for them. To just give an example, even the last, you know, last year we ran an offer where we offered consumers uh, cash back uh, for a certain period of time, which was equivalent to the MRP of the pack. Uh, and we ended up with a, you know, an e-wallet partner and we said, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it, uh, we actually tied up with, we said that uh, you buy a pack of Kurkure or you buy a pack of the range from the Kurkure portfolio, you get a code there, please code in uh, to your mm. UPI linked bank account and you uh, you get the cash back and uh, you know that was one kind of offer I, but I dare say we need to see really big offers rolling out uh, to get the consumers mm-hmm. back into our stores uh, and back into the fold. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks and it will be exciting to see uh, more offers coming in. I would love to see some cash backs. I don't mind. Uh, and I'm sure many people on the call also won't mind, especially for a Pepsi uh, or let's say for a Kurkure. 
uh, i'm not too much a cheetos person myself so can't comment okay and uh, so uh, I, i guess that's it uh, uh, bagdishri i am uh, you know i have read out most of the questions that came i would really want to thank you for these insights and um, for the in depth knowledge that you have and uh, you know again uh, i think on behalf of pine labs on behalf of the viewers a big thank you for you to taking time out from your busy schedule i know um, you know it it's very difficult to take time out on a working day and especially with things moving totally work from home uh, everything is now you know even a casual chat is now kind of moved to a, a specific calendar invite so really thanks for taking time out for this no my pleasure thanks for having me thank you thank you so much thanks uh okay thank you everyone i think uh, you know we are the end of the session thanks from pine labs as well thank you thank you thank you